hello and welcome to the course of msmp now in this course uh, we have uh, we are studying about casting now in this lecture we will see about uh, different casting process and equipment okay so now in this lecture this is a uh, casting process and equipment one we will see another lecture about this casting process and uh, equipment so let's start our lecture so first we will see the lecture objective to present the principle of different casting process to classify the casting process efficiently and to understand the characteristics of each process along with typical application advantages and limitation so casting first we will come to the classification of casting the major classification major categories follows expendable mold casting and in case of uh, expendable mold casting is further classified as expendable mold permanent pattern casting that means in case of expendable mold casting the mold is the mold is not permanent after each casting the mold is broken so that's why it named as expendable mold casting so in case of expendable mold is further classified as expendable mold permanent pattern casting expendable mold expendable pattern casting now there here comes the permanent mold in case of uh, in case of so we will see this is a broad classification of metal casting process so in metal casting process there is three type of casting first is expendable mold casting second one is permanent mold casting and third it's a mix and match of these two type of casting that is composite mold casting another uh, another classification is here that is single crystal growing this single crystal growing thing is not in our syllabus so we will see only brief detail of it after at the end of the uh, at the end of this casting process and equipment topic so it is not so important but the important parts are expendable mold casting permanent mold casting in case of expendable mold casting there is sand casting shell casting plaster molding ceramic molding and expendable mold casting these are the type of the expendable mold casting now in case of expendable mold casting expendable mold with permanent pattern casting in this category sand casting shell casting plaster molding and ceramic casting these are the type these are the first type these are the example of expendable mold permanent pattern casting and evaporative pattern evaporative pattern casting and investment casting these are the type of expendable mold expendable pattern casting so in this lecture in today's lecture we will see sand casting shell casting plaster molding and ceramic molding in detail and after this lecture in the next lecture in the next casting process and equipment 2 we will study about evaporative evaporative pattern investment casting and slash casting pressure die cast pressure die casting centrifugal casting squeeze casting and semi solid casting we will study about this in the next lecture so in this lecture we will study about sand casting shell molding plaster molding and ceramic molding so let's start with expendable mold permanent pattern casting processes so what are the expendable mold permanent the major categories of expendable mold permanent pattern casting processes are sand shell molding plaster plaster molding ceramic molding and vacuum casting this vacuum casting is also not so important but we will discuss it later so right now here is the advantages and limitation of some of the casting process such as sand casting shell molding plaster molding and ceramic molding so one by one we will see the advantages advantages of sand casting is almost any metal almost any metal can be cast there is no limit to part size and 
सेप और वेट सेप देर इज नो लिमिट टू सेप और वेट एंड टूलिंग कॉस्ट इज वेरी लो सो दिस इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ सैंड कास्टिंग बट द फिनिशिंग सरफेस फिनिशिंग सम फिनिशिंग बट आफ्टर द कास्टिंग देर इज सम फिनिशिंग और फिनिश मेशनिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड द सरफेस फिनिश इज नॉट सो गुड एंड इट हैज वाइड टॉलरेंस दैट मीन्स द डायमेंशनल एक्यूरेसी इज नॉट not matched with the design in case of sand casting that means further machining is needed in case of sand casting next is shell molding shell molding can give good dimensional accuracy and surface finish and shell molding has a higher production rate but the limitations of shell molding is part size is very limited and expensive pattern and equipment the cost is high and the part size is very limited next in case of plaster molding in case of plaster molding intricate shape plaster molding and ceramic molding these two can be can be treated these two can be named as precision casting why precision casting because here surface finish and dimensional tolerance is maintained at higher accuracy at or it is maintained for plaster molding and ceramic molding the dimensional accuracy is maintained more accurately so that's why they are called precision casting so see the advantage of plaster molding that is it can make intricate shape intricate means highly complex shape with good dimensional accuracy and surface finish the plaster molds has low porosity so we will see about the porosity what is porosity uh, in the later section of this lecture but the thing is that due to porosity the surface finish becomes becomes surface, due to porosity surface become porous so if we have low porosity if we can have low porosity that can result to good surface finish and the, the disadvantage is Uh, plaster molding is limited to non ferrous metals only means ferrous metal cannot be cannot be casted using plaster mold only non ferrous metals can be casted and past part size is limited and the volume of the production is also limited in case of ceramic molding intricate parts or complex shape can be made close tolerance is there and surface finish is very good and the only limitation and the only limitation is mold making time is very long and limit there is limited part size the part size is very limited so these are the advantages and disadvantages of different casting processes in in the category of expandable mold permanent pattern casting process now we will come in detail study of the sand casting so sand casting in sand casting is one of the oldest method and but it is still prevailing method means it is still used as a form of casting so the typical application of sand casting includes the typical application these applications are important the typical applications is machine bases can be made large turbine impellers propellers plumbing fixture and wide variety of other products and components can be made using sand casting now sand casting is consist of means the process is consist of first placing a pattern that means a pattern is made we will see in detail what is pattern so first pattern is the shape in which the the pattern is the desired shape pattern is our desired shape so placing a pattern that having the shape of our desired casting in sand to make an imprint this is our first step secondly to incorporating a gating system now what is gating system and in detail of the gating system we will study in the uh, study uh, later in this lecture only and next the removing the pattern after the uh, gating incorp after incorporating the gating system the pattern is removed and mold cavity is filled with the molten metal then it is left for solidification means it is allowed to cool until it solidifies 
and after it solidifies, after the solidification is done, after the certain time, the, the mold is broken, uh, the mold is broken, that means breaking away the sand mold and removing the casting. This remo casting, removing of the casting is the last st step of sand casting. So these are the steps of the sand casting. Now we will move to the sand casting as a, see here, by uh, patterns, these patterns are made by pattern making, core making and making the getting system. So this, all these are uh, included in, uh, in pattern making. After there is sand is, after this, here sand is prepared and using this pattern and sand complete mold is prepared or mold cavity is prepared after the mold cavity is prepared from the furnace the metal is melted and in the mold cavity molten metal is poured after the molten metal is poured there is solidification and cooling after solidification and cooling shake out and the removal removal of risers and gate then post processing then after this here the casting process here the casting process ends here the casting process ends here the casting process ends but these are known as this terms heat treatment cleaning and finishing additional heat treatment and inspection these are known as post processing so in case of sand casting this is a complete layout of sand casting. This is a complete layout of the process, complete process layout of sand casting. Now, this is known as here, it is known as post processing. So, post processing. So, we we have already discussed about the steps and now here we can see the process layout of the sand casting. Now in the sand casting one of the most important we are going to some detailed discussion so of sand casting. So for that first we need to know about the sand. So in nature there is two type of sand. First one is silica. Uh, the, in actually most of the sand casting operation uses silica sand that means SiO2 as mold material. Now in nature there is two general type of sand that is nat naturally bonded sand or bank sand and another is synthetic sand or lake sand for better accuracy for better accuracy means for better dimensional accuracy and low porosity. Uh, and uh, and good surface finish synthetic sand is preferred synthetic sa sand is preferred so there are several factors that is important for the selection of the sand for the mold such as first sand should have fine round grain and can be packed closely thus it can form a smooth mold but the, uh, that thus it can fo form a smooth mold, but due to the if the, the uh, due, if the sand grain are fine, they reduce the permeability of the sand. Permeability means presence of porosity or presence of pores. If this is a mold box, this is a mold box. Th here the sand particle is there. Here the sand particles. So here is the sand particles. Now, if the sand particles is very closely packed, if the sand particles is very very closely packed, uh, packed, then what happened? Then there will be no gap between. Then there will be no gap between the sand particles. That means there will be no gap between the sand particles. That means the sand particle feels like this. And now, if in the mold. If in the mold by any reaction some gas is formed, the, the, those gas cannot be cannot be moved. Those gas can be can get interrupted. Those gas gas can in uh, can get interrupted in the casting. So due to this, uh, this is a problem. This causes the defect in casting. So that's why 
what we need to do we need to create we need to create some we need to take sand which has considerable amount of permeability that means permeability means the presence of pores there, that means in the sand good permeability molds uh, should be required so good permeability molds allow the sand allow the gas and steam to e evolve during the casting process to escape easily so that means when the uh, when from the molten metal there is some gas those gas can escape easily using the permeability using the good permeability and another thing should have for being a molding sand for the, the being the mold that mold should also have good collapsibility good collapsibility means collapsibility means it's the ability is the ability to strip up is the ability to strip up that means there should not be there should not be see in a mold in a mold if it is the molten metal if it is the molten metal due to solidification molten metal will shrink due to solidification molten metal will shrink then the, and the collapsibility means the sand the sand wall the sand wall or the sand mold cavity wall should remain at its position should remain at its position without breaking up or without chipping up that means the when the uh, when the material is shrunken when the material is shrunken like that like this mold wall uh, mold cavity wall should be intact and this this can be given by good collapsibility so collapsibility allow the casting to shrink while the cooling and thus avoid defects in casting such as hot tearing and cracking so now we will see these are all about sand now we will see the types of sand mold sand molds can be characterized characterized by the type of sand that comprise them or by them by which the mold is made the, the types can be characterized in or and by the method used to produce the mold so first is the, there is two three broad types first is green sand mold second is cold box mold and third is no bake mold one of the most common materi mold material is green sand mold which consist of green sand mold consist of sand clay and water now the term green why it is called green the term green refers to the term green refers to the fact that sand in the mold that sand in the mold is in moist form so so the sand in the mold is in the moist form that means when the molten metal is poured when the molten metal is poured in the in the mold cavity when the molten metal is poured in the mold cavity the sand here the sand the molding sand is in the form of is is contain the molding sand should contain some moisture the molding sand some contain some moisture so when the molding sand contain moisture then it is called green sand so next it is the least expensive method it is the least expensive method and sand is recycled easily for subsequent reuse so it is the least expensive method next is cold box in cold box process the various organic and inorganic binders are blended into the sand to bond the grain chemically for greater strength so there is chemical or uh, organic or inorganic binders are used in the cold box process these molds are these molds are dimensionally more accurate than uh, these molds are dimensionally more accurate than green sand mold green sand molds and it is they are more expensive 
in the third type of the molds are third type of the sand molds are no bake molds it uh, it uh, uses a synthetic liquid resin which is mixed with sand and the mixture ha uh, hardens at room temperature there is no need of baking the material to be hardened the as the bonding of the molten mold is uh, as the bonding of the mold that is in the cold box process cold box process and uh, no bake mold process takes place without any heat so they are called cold setting process so uh, this cold box process and no bake mold process these two are called cold setting process now so the sand molds can be oven dried or baked sand mold can be oven dried or baked prior to the pouring of the molten metal they are then so they are then stronger than the green sand mold and impart better dimensional quality and surface finish to the casting because when the when by heating by baking we can remove the moisture present in the green sand mold so by which by removing the moisture present presents the porosity the porosity will be uh, reduced and as the porosity is reduced dimensional accuracy and surface finish of the casting will be increased now we will see that some feature of the sand mold so sand mold in a typical sand mold the typical sand mold made in a flux that whole thing that whole box is known as flux the upper part of the flux the upper part of the flux is known as cope and the lower part is known as drag if the material if the flux or if the casting sand casting is made by more than two more, more than two part of the molds then the other parts then the other parts in between cope and drag are known as checks we uh, are known as checks so here is in the in the getting system here in the sand molding we can see that th there is a pouring basin or pouring cup through which the molten material is poured through which the molten material is through which the molten material is poured after the pouring basin there is one uh, tapered like section that is in the last lecture we have studied about this this is sprue and the, at the end of the sprue there is sprue base well in the case of sprue base well what is sprue base well sprue base well is used to to eliminate or to eliminate the slags so after the sprue uh, base well there is runner runner connects the sprue to the mold cavity and the inlet of the mold cavity and the inlet of the mold cavity is known as gate inlet of the mold cavity in known as gate in the mold cavity there is one thing that is core core is used to make intricate or hollow casting core is used to make hollow casting we will study in detail about core later on and the mold this is mold cavity and there is riser there is riser there is two type of riser one is open riser one is blind riser these risers are feedback mechanism these risers are feedback mechanism when due to shrinkage when the solid, when the solidification starts due to shrinkage the mold cavity material in the mold cavity will be less at that time from the open riser and blind riser molten material is supplied to the mold cavity so that shrinkage does not have any effect upon the shape of the or dimensional accuracy of the casting so another thing can be added here that is vent vent is added vent is added to when the molding is when the molding material has low permeability when the molding material has low permeability at that time vent should be added to to uh, to exhaust to exhaust the gases exhaust the gases 
that can that is generated due to interaction between between sand and molten metal. So vent, why vent is used? Vent is used for exhaust of gases. So now these are the general feature of sand mold. Here in this slide, you can find the detail of the general feature of the sand mold. Those I have discussed just right now. So now. I am proceeding to next slide. Here it is only the discussion about what I have told in the last slide. This is mainly for your theory, for your theory. And now I am coming to the patterns. The patterns are used. What is pattern? Patterns are used to mold the sand mixture into the shape of the casting, and they. Can be made of wood, plastic, or metal. They are usually coated by parting agent. Usually coated by parting agent. So, uh, patterns can be made using 3D printing or rapid prototyping. Nowadays, nowadays they are uh, these are the this pattern making can be done very easily, which in turn increases the Uh, increases the functionality in casting operation so patterns can be classified as one piece pattern where only uh, single or solid or loose piece also called loose or solid pattern they are generally used for simpler shape and low quantity production they are usually made of one piece pattern made of wood and they are inexpensive and next there is split pattern If when the pattern made uh, ma patterns are made in two piece or uh, two piece, then it is called split pattern. So uh, when they are split pattern, they are made such a way that each part each part forms a portion of a portion of cavity for the casting. In this way, casting with complicated shape. So using uh, split pattern casting with complicated shape can be produced. And there is another type of pattern which is called match plate pattern. They, uh, these are the common type of common type of mounted pattern in which two piece pattern two piece patterns are constructed by securing half or uh, half of one or more split pattern to the opposite side of a single plate so what is match plate pattern that means it is a, uh, in which the half or one uh, half of one or more split pattern to the opposite side of a single plate can be made means in match plate pattern one or more than one split pattern can be made so next we will discuss about core core is for casting for casting the internal with the internal for casting with internal cavities for casting with internal cavities what we need to do for casting with internal cavities for casting with internal cavities or passage those uh, those are found in automotive engine block or valve body cores are utilized how the cores are utilized cores are placed in the mold cavity to form interior surface of the casting and to remove uh, and are removed from the finished part during the shake out or further processing the core is anchored using the core print the core is anchored using the anchored by core print with the recess added to the pattern to locate and support the core uh, locate and support the core and to provide vent for escaping of gases these are the what function of core print now metal support that are due to this due to when the uh, molten metal flow into the mold cavity due to bouncy force of the molten metal due to bouncy force of the molten metal what can happen the core can seep so prevention of this core seep prevention of this core seep can be made using two metal part those metal parts are known as chaplets so here in this picture here in this picture you can see the core prints core cavity 
parting line mold and here you can see chaplets here you can see chaplet core core print and cavity so the example is clear to you and i guess the till now the about the casting process you have getting some ideas now in the casting there is mold some molding machine there is some molding machine so oldest known molding machine are uh, oldest known molding can be done using hand hammering or uh, the tamping or rimming around the pattern now this rimming process this rimming process can be done using molding ma molding machine using different molding machine the, uh, as the, a development to the casting process so some of typical molding machines are vertical flexing mo molding slant sand slinger impact molding machine and vacuum molding machine these are the type of molding machines uh, the knowledge of this names is will be enough for now because in detail study of this molding machine are out of our scope of syllabus next sand casting how the operation work in sand casting for for sand casting first we need to design first we need to mechanically draw the draw the part so first we need to have a design according to this design first cope pattern place is made cope means the upper part so upper part of the molding box the upper part pattern is made after that there in the upper uh, after that in the drag pattern there is in the uh, in the drag patterns so here uh, here the cope pattern in the cope pattern in the cope pattern there is core print see uh, very clearly that in case of drag patterns in the case of drag pattern means pattern for the lower body patterns for the lower body there is getting system so as a question one you can ask where the getting system is incorporated the getting system is incorporated in the in the drag part in the drag part okay so now core prints where the core prints is incorporated core prints is incorporated in both the parts in in cope pattern and in drag pattern now by this two pattern by molding we can make core box uh, co uh, now with these two patterns we have now we have to first make the core because it's a uh, uh, the device has a hollow cavity so for making a core we need to make a core box first by uh, from the core box we we make the core hub and put together and put them together and after the core hub is ready after the core, core hub is ready what we do we uh, ready the cope for the sand first we ready the cope for the sand uh, cope uh, first we ready the cope for the sand now when the cope is ready when the cope is ready we uh, fill the cope with sand we fill the cope with sand and after rimming see this is the picture of the cope after rimming this is the picture of the cope after rimming with sand and removing the metal uh, and removing the pattern and removing the pattern sprue pattern sprue pattern sprue and riser next drag is ready for the um, for the sand after the drag is ready the, uh, the drag is uh, ready after the after removing of pattern now is this the drag which is ready after removing of the pattern now uh, we place the core in the drag now we place the core in the drag and we put the uh, we put the cope above the drag and when we put the cope above the drag we close the pin by closing pin now we leave it now we pour the material from the we pour the material from pouring machine we pour the material molten metal from pouring machine 
and we can have the casting like uh, the, the we can have the casting uh, casting as per the design but along with the getting system and along with the getting system and riser and vents etc so further processing is needed to remove all this material further processing is needed to remove riser vents uh, vents and uh, sprue and getting other getting system elements so that can be done that is done and the final product is the final product is as per our desired drawing the final product is as our desired drawing so this is the final product this is as our desired drawing so so these are the sand casting operations these are the sand casting operations now now we we are discuss we will discuss about now we will discuss about shell molding shell molding that this shell molding can produce shell molding can produce close dimensional tolerance and good surface finish at low cost good surface finish at low cost and it its application its typical application includes small mechanical part that require the, that require small mechanical part that require high precision that require high precision small mechanical part that require high precision uh, uh, such as gear housing cylinder head connecting rod and other part also is uh, 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 the other process is also sorry now uh, the cell molding cell molding has application of uh, has application typical application as to make gear housing cylinder head connecting rod and the process is also used widely for producing high precision molding coats now the quality of the finished casting can reduce uh, can reduce cleaning machining and other finishing costs significantly complex shapes or intricate shapes can be made using shell molding using shell molding with less labor and the process can be automated very easily the thickness of the shell can be determined by accurate determined accurately by controlling the time that takes uh, that the pattern is, is in contact with the mold so now we will see the process these are the uh, process this is the process so uh, roughly from this figure we can say that first this core this uh, pattern is heated first this pattern is heated at a temperature at a temperature of 3 175 to 370 degrees celsius then it is coated by parting agent such as silicone so this is the coated by parting agent such as silicon then it is it is it is placed in a box then it is see then it is placed in a box for it is clamped in a box or chamber then the box that box contains fine sand mixed with 2.5 to 4% of thermosetting resin binder and uh, uh, this that coats the sand particle that means the, the box contains of coated sand contains coated sand then by rotating the box by rotating the box by rotating the box uh, pattern and the drum box by secondly by, the, by rotating the box box investment is made see by rotating the box the pattern is allowed to uh, by rotating the box upside down or the sand mixture is blown over the pattern to allow it to form coating then after the uh, after this is over then this is this pattern is uh, placed this pattern is placed in the oven the pattern is placed in the oven for a short time of period to uh, to complete curing of the for the complete curing of the resin and then this pattern is this two half of the shell then the uh, the shell pattern and the shell is removed from the drop box and 
by adhesive or clamp by adhesive or clamp two halves are joined together like this and we got the we got our complete mold we got our complete mold here in the mold if we pour the material then we can get the shape of the we can get the desired shape so this is how cell molding or drop box processing can be done uh, can be done so now why drop box because as the drop is a box is uh, being upside down so the process is named as drop box process next is plaster molding in plaster molding and ceramic molding these two are the precision casting these two are the precision casting that means these two can give close dimensional dimensional tolerance and good surface finish so now what is in this process mold is made of plaster of paris the mold is made of plaster of paris with the addition of tall silica floor to improve strength and to control the time required for the plaster to set these components are mixed with water resulting in a surly to be poured over the pattern the plaster sets uh, after the plaster is set then it is removed uh, it is removed the mold is dried at a temperature range 120 to 260 degrees celsius the mold hub are then assembled to form mold cavity and uh, are preheated about 120 degrees celsius to molten material the, then the molten material is poured into the mold patterns for plastic molding generally are made of material such as aluminum alloy thermosetting plastic brass brass and zinc alloy since they have there is limit to maximum temperature that can be achieved that can be registered by plaster of paris or by plaster mold the plaster mold can can used for casting only of aluminum magnesium zinc and some other based other copper based alloy now ceramic mold casting it is same as the now ceramic mold casting it is similar to the plaster mold casting expect except it uses refractory mold material it uses refractory mold material material suitable for high temperature application which is suitable for high temperature application the typical parts that are made uh, made using ceramic mold casting is uh, are impellers cutters machining operation uh, for machining operation dies for dies for metal working mold making uh, making for plastic and rubber other rubber component the surly is a mixture here the surly is a mixture of fine grain zircon zircon that is zr sio4 aluminum oxide and fused silica which is mixed with other bonding agent and poured over the pattern which has been placed pattern that pattern is placed in the flux then pattern may be made of the pattern may be made of wood or metal after setting the mold after setting the mold the pattern is uh, removed dried and ignited to burn off the volatile material and bake the mold is mold are capable uh, cam, clamped firmly and used as all ceramic mold the ceramic fringes are then baked in by fire clay to give strength to the mold the facing uh, then the facing then are assembled to complete the mold Red, uh, complete the mold ready to be poured so it is a high temperature resistance high temperature resistance due to the high temperature resistance of the refractory molding material the molding material allows this mold to be used for casting casting ferrous and other high temperature alloy stainless steel and other tool steel although the process is expensive this process is expensive this process is expensive but casting have good dimensional accuracy and surface finish over the range of size and integrate shape so that's why this ceramic mold casting is used 
so this is a typical picture of the ceramic mold, mold casting first the charlie is poured first the charlie is poured then this green sand mold green charlie mold green mold can be separated and after the separation it is burnt off it burnt off the volatile material thank you uh, this burnt off the volatile material so thank you that is it for today in the next lecture we will study about the we will study about the the expandable mold expandable pattern casting and permanent mold casting so for now this is it if you have any problem please feel free to contact with me and and please go through all these lectures to understand more clearly and another thing the book i am uh, referring the book i am saying there is various book for various book for manufacturing process you can use pn rao volume 1 and 2 first book suggestion is pn rao volume 1 and 2 this is a good book pn rao is a good book pn rao 1 and volume 2 manufacturing process by mp gruber it's also a good book mp gruber and last one is kalpak jain so these are the book i am following for the course and uh, if you want to follow them you can follow them but uh, i will suggest to follow uh, follow pn rao as a as your textbook and this two book mp gubar and kalpak jain book as a reference one so thank you